So we've talked about choosing the show. We've talked a little bit about auditions and everything. Um, but one of the bigger next steps that I gathered from talking to you earlier was scheduling everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't sound like the most exciting mm -hmm. thing or the f most fun thing, yeah, yeah. but it's such a huge part. Yeah. So I, so like kind of going into this semester, uh, what are some of the things you have to think about just for getting the shows lined up and scheduled? Yeah, so basically we have to look at we have to look at the university calendar in terms of like when holiday breaks are, when um, and things like fall break and spring break and those kinds of things. We also have to look at uh, we share our space, especially in the latter part, like the last few weeks of the semester, with the music program. So we also have to think about what what do they have that they need to schedule. And then we also have a lot of students who do uh, theater and forensics. So uh, forensic sends us like the big tournament dates and stuff like that. We have to think about holidays like Easter and, and stuff like that where we don't necessarily get time off here, but like people might be going somewhere, you know. So looking at all that, <laughs> by the time... And, and again, this is just to figure out six <laughs> this is total just to days. to figure out the, the three to, to do these shows. shows. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time we do all that, usually the dates we pick, uh, the weekends we pick, usually the ones we pick are the only There's, there's ones. no plan yeah. B. Yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. It is once you kind of filter everything, this is right. the which, only option. Which is what was so tough about covid uh, interruptions because yeah. we really didn't have, we just don't have options for rescheduling. We also try to avoid competing with big events. Like we wouldn't want to schedule a show, you know, in conflict with something that student activities had going on that was a major draw and stuff like that. You don't want to schedule your season premiere of your TV show the same day of the Super Bowl. Right. Like something exactly. Like that. Same you, idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So let's go into kind of the rehearsal part. So mm -hmm. you talked about all the difficulties figuring out yeah. how to plan, just when to do si roughly six days worth of the show. What are some of the challenges of figuring out how to rehearse this show, essentially? In, in any show, you kind of have to look at the needs of the show because some shows are going to need extra time for things like music or choreography or stage combat or dialect or whatever it might be. Uh, and then you also have to look at your actor's schedules because like, especially now we have a lot of students who take night classes and our rehearsals are usually at night. You have to make sure you have enough time for each of the phases of rehearsal. So like there's that initial phase of reading and uh, table work, talking about the show and the characters. Then there's the getting it up on its feet and figuring out where people are going to move and stand and what kind of stage pictures you're going to have. Um, and then there's the actually working with actors on developing their characters, developing their relationships, uh, clarifying the moments, working on pacing, like what parts are going to be fast and slow and what, play, what parts are going to be intense and what parts are going to be less intense so that, so that the show has texture, right? And then also working in the, the technical elements. You've got to have time, usually during Tech Week, to work in the costumes, light, sound, set changes, all that. So you're looking at those phases of rehearsal that have to be in any rehearsal schedule. So you mentioned there was three actors for The Taming. How many do you have for uh, The Taming of the Shrew? We have nine. nine so actors. nine actors playing 16 so, roles. So it almost seems like you're trying to construct about 11 puzzle pieces, none <laughs> with corner or edges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. somehow all these are supposed yeah. to also build into each mm -hmm. other essentially yeah. which actually I think that would sound like a pretty good competition game trying yeah. to figure out that, that kind yeah. of puzzle but uh, earlier you mentioned the phases of rehearsal how mm -hmm. uh, at one point you kind of have table read you're just kind of walking through it then you kind of it's weird because you, you take away elements. You take away, There's like a certain point where it's like no more scripts. So you're taking right. away an element and mm -hmm. in doing so you're yeah. adding to the challenge. Mm -hmm. But my question is, so how do you determine how long you want each phase to be? Um, so part of that is like I've been directing now for about 20, 21 years. And so I've developed a pretty good sense of like how long it takes to accomplish certain, you know, to accomplish each phase based on what show I'm working on. It is a skill, like when I teach directing, we really work on that. They, one of their assignments is to do a practice rehearsal schedule. And one thing I notice about new directors, people who haven't done it before, is they want to spend, like, like I'll get, I'll get that assignment from students and they've got like, I don't know, 
ten, sometimes 10 rehearsals for blocking, which is like just figuring out the movement. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that. Okay, so we, it's not the most. We need some major yeah, cuts here. It's not the most fun part of, at least not for, I don't think anybody is that their most fun part of rehearsals. I'm like, you really don't need this much time for blocking. You know, you can get at least the broad strokes, entrance exits, major crosses and things. You know, for most shows in three or four rehearsals, you really don't need 10. And then that frees you up to do, like, what to me is the fun stuff about rehearsal. As, as both an actor and a director, my favorite part of rehearsal is working on your characters, working on your relationships, you know, finding, finding the jokes in a comedy and understanding them, really bringing it to life, right? You know, acting is living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And the fun part to me of rehearsal is that part, is where you really get to play make-believe a little bit and, and live as those characters. Do I ever get nervous on opening night? Uh, I mm, probably less nervous as a director than I am when I'm an actor. Um, I, of course, I'm pro and I'm probably in some senses more nervous as the producer <laughs> than as the director because I want to see are people going to come see the show? Are we going to have audiences? Um, by the time we reach opening night, when I'm the director, there's really not. Uh, not a lot I can do at that point. I've kind of done everything I can do. So I look forward actually really to just sitting back and enjoying the show, you know, so I don't have to take notes um, <laughs> like I'm doing during rehearsals. I can just be an audience member and I really enjoy that. Being a director is uh, often like being a parent. Um, I like to say you have influence over many things, but actual control over almost nothing. Um, and so probably nothing uh, brings that home more than when the show opens because it's not like you can, uh, you know, say, okay, let's stop and work on that. You know, it starts and it just goes, right? So, um, and I think you feel, you know, proud and nervous the same way parents do, like when their kids are like competing in an event or something or performing. And, um, but your main job at that point is to be, is to just be supportive and not, um, you know, not sweat the small stuff and celebrate uh, the performance and the work that went into the performance. Looking back, uh, looking back, I think giving uh, myself, my past self advice or, or things I might do differently if I was doing this again, I would, I would really want about another mm, one to two weeks uh, I think that would have been a nice, nice thing to have for some an additional uh, rehearsal time. And I also, it, it, one thing that was really challenging this time was I, because I wear so many different hats because I'm the director and the producer and a professor <laughs> and trying to, it was really more, much more challenging this time than it has ever been in, before just with one show to kind of keep all those uh, plates in the air. There's some things that definitely uh, got pushed later <laughs> to take care of than, than they normally would. So um, if I had a couple extra weeks, I think I could have spaced all of that, all of those responsibilities out a little better. I think with the time that we had, like I, I plan, as I mentioned, I think the first time we talked, I planned my rehearsal schedule really carefully and um, and you know you can plan for what you think is enough rehearsal time but whatever particular combination of actors that you have working on a show their needs might be different from you know any other cast you've ever worked with and one thing i definitely just discovered is that in particular this these two groups of people i think would have would have benefited from the additional time. I, I went back because I was like, oh my gosh, did I really shortchange people? You know, did I not have enough rehearsal time? So I went back and I added up the amount of rehearsal. And actually it's, you know, it's within the realm of what would be ex uh, uh, considered a standard amount of rehearsal time. But sometimes, you know, maybe on the lower end of standard, but sometimes that's not enough for everything that people are dealing with. We, we had some sort of unusual things pop up with just individual people and sometimes people as a group, like just things that nobody could have known 
uh, were going to happen. Um, and that, you know, if, if you have a really lean rehearsal schedule and you can't reschedule, because I think we also talked about how tricky it is to set dates, so we couldn't postpone, right? So we had what we had and, you know, and, and, and then you don't have wiggle room if things come up that sort of, you know, make things take a little bit longer. Um, I, I, what I hope people get out of watching this show is um, with the taming, I hope they get a, some good laughs, but also that maybe it prompts them to think a little bit. Uh, I think politics today is not something that people laugh at a lot. And I think one thing the show does a good job of is, is getting people to see some of the absurdity on all from all sides of the political spectrum and asks us to in a comic way asks us to think about what would it take for us to work together um, and then for taming of the shrew i hope people realize that shakespeare can be fun um, that they you know that the characters are fun and funny and the situations are fun and funny one piece of advice i gave my theater appreciation students because they're required to see the shows for class and and one piece of advice i gave them for taming of the shrew uh, was you know do not worry about trying to understand every single word you know just just sit back just watch what the actors are doing listen to them notice their you know their body language their tone of voice um, and don't struggle to try to understand every single word and you'll be much happier. So waking up this morning on the opening of the first show, I, um, some things running through my head was just, I'm just thankful that we got here. Um, excited to see how the shows play in, in front of an audience. Um, wanting to continue to support the cast and crew as they go about doing their work um, because really it's all about them now.